Everyone wants to know who this year's Mark Andrews is, who this year's Chris Godwin is. We're going into the fantasy time machine. Uh, we have some insight from the future. We're going to let you know. Make sure you subscribe, click the bell, so you can check out the show all year long. Foot Clan, we're all kind of looking for a bright spot right now, are we not? Mm-hmm. Well, I got one for you. There's a hilarious new series on Apple TV Plus starring Jason Sudeikis called Ted Lasso. It's about an American football coach who heads to England to take a shot at managing one of the world's most competitive professional soccer teams. It's an age-old story. Of course. If you like a show with big laughs and a lot of heart, then this is the one you've been looking for. Watch Ted Lasso right now on the Apple TV app. Subscription required for Apple TV+. Plus. Great Scott! If my calculations are correct, you are listening to this before your fantasy football drafts have taken place. I have been to the future, and those that follow the advice from the Fantasy Footballer's Ultimate Draft Kit had a spectacular season and withstood many victories. It's almost as if Biff had given each of them a copy of Greatest Sports Almanac. I'd highly recommend heading over to www.ultimatedraftkit.com without any further delay. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. My calculations are correct. It's Friday. My calculations are correct. It's one word, Andy. It's one word. My calculations are correct. Oh, great Scott. Uh, welcome in. Look, I mean, great friend of the show, Doc Brown. <laughs> Doc Brown. It's not even... It's not even the actor. It's Doc Brown. He's, right. Yeah. Doc Brown's the good friend the of the close show. Friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good, good buddy. All right. It's Friday, August 21st. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Excited to be with you. We are entering the time machine today. And I really like this show. I like this episode because everybody last year's fresh on your mind. You have all the breakout candidates, and we're going to take time today to look at those players and who we project is maybe taking on those roles for this upcoming year. And, and thankfully we have the ability to travel to the future and see that. So these are just stone cold locks. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, fantastic news. From what I understand last year, we did okay on the time machine. We well, had, uh, of course we did because we were in a time machine. Yeah. We, uh, we tried to go to the future and find the George Kittle found mark andrews oh that was the projection last year excellent jason tried to go to the future and find the 2018 robert woods for 2019 mm -hmm. i found him he went with robert woods it was robert woods again because he guess who the 2020 <laughs> robert woods is gonna be yeah you took an easier route like that one is genetically true but it was also <laughs> fantasy true yeah. and will be again please draft your robert woods and uh, Mike, Mike was trying to find the 2019 version of Nick Chubb, running back that came along swiftly back half of the year. Went with Devin Singletary, who mm -hmm. really had a nice, nice finish to the year. So it's proven we can travel into the future. Now we had a fun time yesterday on the My Guys episode. Hopefully Oof. you, Oof. hopefully you caught the the Blake out and the Drake out. <laughs> so it was it was fun. You can find us on YouTube and you can the, watch that episode. The Jake out. Uh, okay. Okay. You okay? Yeah, you it's tracking? Friday. I'll take it. <laughs> look. Yeah, the Josh Jake out. Yeah. yeah, look, it's Friday. You are getting C grade material at best. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it also means something else. Put Clan Friday. It's Foot Clan Friday. That means a weekly giveaway for one of our supporters over at jointhefoot.com. It's an especially great time to support the show at jointhefoot.com because we just launched the largest fantasy football year-long tournament in existence. We are reaching out to Guinness Book of World Records to... Wait, are we really? 
Well, at, you see, that whole thing, we thought we might, but then we realized it might just be a big racket. I mm -hmm. mean, they you got to pay an application fee. I think I don't think there's any limit on the amount of world records that can exist. So what if someone comes along and... But you know. what if we had a piece of paper from Guinness? Yeah, that'd be sure. nice. That'd be <laughs> pretty we cool. Have a world I think we're going to pursue it. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll, we'll pay the money. But no, you can uh, support us at jointhefoot.com. Get into the Megalobowl tournament right now. And we are giving away today on Foot Climb Friday a signed Keenan Allen jersey. Mm, compliments our friends at Pristine Auction. Yeah, and the winner is Bannertown Fruit Bats. Oh, congratulations. Which is a person. Or a team. Could be. A team of people. Uh, you can use the code BALLERS at pristineauction.com. Get $10 off your first item. Signed Keenan Allen jersey. Congratulations, Bannertown Fruit Bats. You can follow the show on Twitter, at the FF Ballers. I recommend that you do. Find us on Instagram, instagram.com slash fantasyfootballers. And uh, appreciate everybody that is leaving the show a review on Apple Podcasts, yes, subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you're listening. Thank you very much. We are right in the thick of it. You can feel the energy oh, for you, the season. You really can. I mean, you know, it was it was a little slower starting mm -hmm. this year with kind of the the nebulous unknown and the had lack. to call triple A to get in uh, here, uh, jump start the car. Yeah, need a, need a locksmith, you know, break in, <laughs> break back in. But now the floodgates are open. Friends and family and and you know coworkers of yours, our coworkers have been into fantasy for quite some time now. Uh, are are all flooding back in, and the the conversations are starting. The draft talk, the the messages on Twitter, on Instagram. It's it's wonderful. Jason's especially excited because uh, he received an invite from yours truly to get into the the family league. That mm -hmm. last year I I set up a uh, like a father son league, and we had some people in it from the Foot Clan. Last minute thing. My my two sons learned how to play fantasy last year. So first year they came and said I wanted to learn. So they they jumped in. And uh, Jason's got his uh, I am whole family in it. Very excited because for the first time ever, my family is starting up in fantasy. And the idea of like, if my boys actually love it, because I'll never force them to. But if we could just chat fantasy football day, that'd I, be awesome. I know that's what you say you're excited about, but I expected the words out of your mouth to be the idea that I could take advantage of my two sons in a trade <laughs> and really load my roster. That's what I thought you were going to say. That will be year two. That will year two. I will You're setting the crush table. Look, their spirits. Training wheels off, boys. Exactly. <laughs> Daddy has let go of the bike seat. You're going to fall. <laughs> All right. And you know what you said your your youngest son really into he wants Lamar Jackson right now. Yeah, got him into the ultimate draft kit and he saw that he had the most points. So he's like he's telling everybody uh, I want Lamar Jackson. <laughs> you know, okay. okay. I gave him a little warning about. Uh, well, that that's the funny thing. Uh, my uh, my son drafted Aaron Rodgers in the first round last year, and it was like, hey, I just let him. I let him go. Right. I let him go. Let him. He got the ultimate draft kit, and that's how, somehow he knew that name, and he 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 won the league. Um. All right. Quick question of the day. We did my guys yesterday. I wanted to throw this at the end of the My Guys episode. We ran out of time, so I wanted it as the quick question today. <laughs> um, my Guys, those players are put up on a pedestal. They're associated with you. Mm -hmm. If things go south, um, you know, ultimately, it may or may not reflect on you. Carry on, carry on. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. I deserve it. I get it. I deserve it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, and I... I I took Dante Pettis away from my, my guys, and I still, every 13 seconds, get a tweet about Dante Pettis. But today's quick question, <clears throat> name a player that you want credit for, but no blame, okay? Mm. So you can take a, a different kind of uh, yeah. a, a different kind of pick here, because maybe you're picking somebody a little bit more risky. If yeah, you want I, credit, no blame. I do want credit because I believe <laughs> in Jerry Judy. I, I wanted to make him my, my guy. I think he is... A world class. I never. I didn't know it got that serious for you. With yeah, Jerry Judy. It it did. He, I think he's a world class wide receiver. I've been waiting for him for a couple of years, just watching the film, being like, this guy is better than NFL wide receivers. That was two years ago. Now, right off the bat in camp, he's he's torching guys. Everybody, the defenders are like, this guy is for real. And 
honestly, if it wasn't for this kind of weird shortened off season where I just don't know how much you can trust the beginning of the year for, for any rookies not named Clyde Edwards Alaire, I might have picked him. But, uh, you know, I think it could be tough sledding. I don't know about Drew Locke. There are so many ways it goes wrong. But I want my name associated with Jerry Judy because I do believe in the talent 100%. I will throw two injury plagued wide receivers out there <laughs> AJ Green and Will Fuller. Those are two players okay. that I, I believe in. Uh, we'll talk about Will Fuller a little bit later on the show today. But uh, no, I don't want the punch in the face when AJ Green goes down during the year. And uh, yet I want the credit if he does well because I still believe that we have never seen AJ Green anything less than spectacular on a football field. And so, yeah, I want credit. No blame, Jay. No, 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 no blame. This is a good practice. This is cathartic and awesome. This is a good practice for everyone. You at home, figure out who you and and claim it. You should you should tweet <laughs> it and say this is the guy I want full credit for if he does well. But please, like no no blame if he doesn't. This everyone should get one or in Andy's case two. <laughs> Mike, who's the player? Can I get three? Um, there are no, no rules. It's <laughs> a Friday. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go with one and. It, because th th he was nowhere near a my guy, but you've heard me talk about him several times on this show, and I get the guff. I get the guff from my co-hosts here. I'm talking about the Yak King up in New York. I will talk <laughs> Golden Tate. Look, someone from the New York Giants in the wide receiver core is going to make fantasy noise, and everyone is picking and choosing who they, they think it is. Uh, I, I think that the the overall feeling of the the industry is it'll be Sterling Shepard. Shepard's a great wide receiver. I just I still trust in Golden Tate and his ability to to get it done. So that that's my that's my free pass. And you know what, Mike? I don't blame you for it. Thank you. Right now. Well, you on can't, this show, I can't blame you. You no. can't blame me in the future either. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, it's the whole point of the segment. That's true. All right, we are moving on to news and notes. A lot has been happening around training camp. Before we do that, we are doing a live stream. We are answering your questions this afternoon. We're having a party. Uh, we are going to be with you for quite some time at 6 Eastern, and we are giving away an ultimate draft kit for life, plus an Alvin Kamara signed jersey. We're doing that today. Uh, I'm very excited. Everybody's, everybody's ready to go for this season. And what's better than winning a UDK for life? Nothing. Nothing is better. Yep, and all who pre-ordered are entered. Yeah, ultimatedraftkit.com. You got to get the Ultimate Draft Kit for 2020 before the end of that live stream to be eligible to win. If you already have it, you're eligible to win. Yeah, great news. Great, great news. You're, you're in. My calculations are correct. <laughs> news and notes from around the league. Every bit of news... Brings a little joy, a little hype, a little terror to fantasy football players. Yesterday, Tyreek Hill diagnosed with a minor hamstring strain. Uh, he will go towards the team-by-team -team quota. You must have at least five players with hamstring strains right now, or the league will remove your team. I think it's a matter of uh, how, how fast are you. If you're really fast, then you hurt your hamstring. Oh, like, it's obligatory. Like A.J. Green, huh? Or how old? There are oh, two right. ways. There are two ways you can hurt yourself. Oh, you almost walked into a compliment there. Oh. Be careful. Oof, that was dangerous. Um, I, I, you know, I don't think we should be worried. Uh, so this is true uh, about how I view it. And tell me if this is wrong or foolhardy, because or if it's just hypocritical. The way that I look at some of these little hamstring tweaks is ageist. When it's a younger guy, I feel like their ability to bounce back and be healthy and be fine is – it doesn't worry me at all. DeAndre Hopkins tweaks his, tweaked his hamstring. Tyreek Hill tweaked his hamstring, and I'm not worried. Whereas, I am worried about A.J. Green and T.Y. Hilton. Same exact problem, and I'm not treating them all the same. Do you think that is wise or foolish? I think it's the correct, the, the correct decision to make. I mean, you you got to be worried about a, a guy who's a little bit older. Like if I know right now, if I tweak my hamstring, <laughs> I'm out for months. Yeah, months, years. Yeah, you might Possibly, never yeah. get. You I might may never, never get recover. Back to 100. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I I think I think the age plays a big role. I, if Julio Jones went down with a hamstring right now, I'd be I'd be concerned. Even though he's been on the field mm -hmm. um, now for three four years pretty consistently, it's still 
it lingers. The, the concern lingers. But I think teams are also being smarter. I think teams are just getting these guys no preseason games, no reason to go mm-hmm. go wild with them, let them recover. Sammy Watkins hasn't practiced in several days. He's got a groin injury. Ah! Yeah, that's not good. My groin. And he is just always banged up and hurt and dealing with injuries. Come and, on, Sammy. Uh, Melvin Gordon had to be pulled from practice early yesterday. There is more to this Melvin Gordon talk that I want to bring up. Uh, he tweaked his ribs, so they pulled him out. Um uh, doesn't know the severity. That's head coach Vic Fangio. Melvin Gordon, there was also some other beat reporters talking about Philip Lindsay and Melvin Gordon and, you know, at least the rhetoric out of the mouths of, of the Detroit or the uh, Denver coaching staff is these guys both deserve to be looked at as the number one. Yeah, I, I think the quote was talking about how no one, we don't need to name a starter because they are both starters to our team, which is... Yikes. Yes, a- absolutely. And... This is how I've been looking at this situation. This, and this, I guess I'm uh, coming off a little Jason Toot Tooty over here. But Melvin Gordon is a fine player. Philip Lindsay, though, back to back 1,000 uh, yard rushing seasons. Like, he is a good player. Just because you're able to get Melvin Gordon on a, on a reasonable contract. I mean, it's Melvin Gordon made some money. You didn't have to really overpay the veteran. They're both going to be used on the field, which is it's troubling for fantasy. I, I still believe Melvin Gordon is the far more likely guy to get the goal line carries. So that that's the and he'll di- get he'll get all the third down. Uh, Philip Lindsay graded out terribly in pass protection last year, and Gordon has experience there, right? But it's it actually concerns me. It, it, it should, it, yeah, it concerns for me because I have a choice in my draft of going Melvin Gordon with the you know a, a late third round pick. Or I can go someplace like David Montgomery, who has uh, more opportunities to himself, 275-plus opportunities in that offense. We haven't seen Gordon in Denver. It does concern me a little bit. He Gordon does have a way to, sc- you know, even if they're splitting time, like you said, if he's catching the ball and he's scoring, he'll deliver on his ADP. But now he's banged up. Yeah, it's it's one of those true, like, coach-speak moments where you have to decide – do you believe? Because I was not where Mike is right now. I was believing that the money they gave him and the fact that they, you know, had been trying but unsuccessfully to have the running game that they wanted, and they go out and they sign Melvin Gordon to be the guy, and then the, and then Philip Lindsay will be relegated to a backup um, who is used, but you know, not an equal opportunity here between you know these two guys. And this coach speak says. No, it's they're both going to be utilized. But do you believe the coach? Because and and that's the question. And I do. And when you combine that kind of talk at the same time that Melvin Gordon misses, you know, reps right now and is injured, and Philip Lindsay is running with the ones, I I think that helps seal that coach this, speak into place. This is a very popular thing to do, though, as he, as a head coach. Sure, is not separate somebody, not tell Philip Lindsay he's a two, not tell Michael Gallup he's a two. Don't go telling Tevin Coleman he's a two. This is why why label? We don't need labels. That's kind of a and, a and I would thing. say because why would you demotivate Lindsay? I mean that it doesn't do you any favors. Yeah, the, the fact though that that Philip Lindsay is in fact very good at football and I, like he was good enough that he came in off the street, not drafted, and beat out a third round pick. He beat out Royce Freeman, who uh, you know Division One, Pac twelve. One of the all-time leading rushers in college football drafted to be their guy. Phil Lindsay was he outplayed him and he took the job. So to to say to me to think that Melvin Gordon is just going to come in and get 65 percent of the work, I don't. I, that's far too high for me. Uh, Phil Lindsay was the number nineteen overall fantasy running back last year. Um, Jared Stidham. Battling discomfort in his leg, uh, so he di- he wasn't at practice today. That is Patriots quarterback uh, that w- we don't consider to be real competition yeah. for Cam Newton's yeah, job. Yeah, he, he's had the interception problems as well. If you've been following the beat reporters, it's I'm not sure why they are taking so long up up in New England. I mean, maybe they have access to information that we don't. But to me, it's if Cam Newton's going to be the guy and lead your offense, you better. You better just tell him he's the starting quarterback and start getting to work of your starting quarterback is getting all the first-team work. 
is the fact they're not doing that indicative of more of a competition than we think? Yeah, it, that's what I'm saying. It, it's at least a little bit more of a competition. I I have no doubt that Cam Newton is going to win out. Do you guys have any concern with the the length that this quarterback uh, competition is going that maybe Jared Stidham does win the job? I would be so blown away if Jared Stidham wins the job. I, 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 I can't even imagine that outside of Cam going down to a, a new injury. Well, I'll, I'll say this. If Jared Stidham's a better quarterback, he'll win the job. Unlike other teams that may feel a loyalty to Cam Newton's name and pedigree. Sure. Right. New England has more. They're, they're going to put the better player out on the field. I agree with regardless. that. I think you and I just said the same thing, though. <laughs> yeah, you could you could be right, but we don't know. Yeah. We don't know with Cam right now. Uh, but we all agree that we're statting Cam to be the starter. Um, where are we with Justin Jefferson? Right now in camp, he seems to be, quote, the clear number three option. You have um, B.C. Johnson. You've got... Tajay Sharp added to the offense. We're Adam all over the, We are all over the place with the Minnesota Vikings rookie wide receiver because the Athletic, who they were the ones that had the report that said it's between Jefferson and BC. Then there was another Athletic uh, report, at least reported by Roto World, saying he's running with the second team offense. In so as I, I don't know where to go with Justin Jefferson. If I'm taking a draft chance on a rookie wide receiver for redraft. It's not going to be Justin Jefferson. Yeah, that that's where I'm at. Right off the bat, when camp started, he was running with the twos. He's still been with the twos. That's not to be unexpected in a shortened season. He's still a rookie coming in. But when you combine that with them talking about, oh, we're trying to – maybe we're seeing if Irv Smith can Big line Irv. up outside. Like, you know, I, they, 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 they're looking for a solution. They're not assuming it's Justin Jefferson. And that leads me to believe – Look, if Justin Jefferson has a phenomenal career and is a great fantasy option, it's not going to be in the first half of his rookie season. It's just not not happening. So uh, he's pretty much off my redraft boards. Yeah, the other side of the coin is he's competing with Tajay Sharp and BZ Johnson to get opportunities. Uh, so yeah. cream rises. Sure. Well, I mean, but it might take a AJ Brown weeks. was competing with Tajay Sharp, and it took him half a season. <laughs> Ta right. Oh, Sharp. I don't. I don't disagree that it'll take time, but I believe it will happen. Sure. Uh, Washington football team coach Ron Rivera announced yesterday mm. he's been diagnosed with uh, a form of lymph node cancer, very treatable and curable, going to stay the head coach, going to stay yeah, that's coaching. The, the current plan is Rivera will, will keep his job. They've uh, Washington's reported there is a backup option in place should Rivera need to take some time off. But get after it, Ron. Yeah, yeah. Get right. healthy. Go after that championship. And listen, Foot Clan, if you – are going after your championship. We want to make sure you know where to get all of your glorious, uh, your hardware that you can shove in people's faces. And I don't mean that. That sounds literally. violent. I don't mean that literally. Because like those championship rings, if you put that on and you shove that in someone's face, you go to jail. Because these things are like brass knuckles. They're beautiful and they're huge. You, you got to stop short of the punch. But you got to make sure that you're putting it in their face. I have no idea where you're going on Here's, this one. He's, where I'm on going. A, he's on a ride, man. <laughs> where we're going, we don't need roads. Listen. There ain't no road. If you're a champ, if you're going to be a champ, if you've got a league, there will be Trophies, a champ. Trophies, rings, belts. Trophies, rings, belts. Fantasy champs is where you get your hardware. And here's the thing. My my favorite personal... my the free, I, free ring. The thing I like the best... Goodness. Uh, is is the championship ring. That's my favorite All thing. All right. Yeah, we're back. If I was to buy something, it would be a championship ring. Those are 60 bucks. Right now, they're doing a deal where if you buy a trophy or a belt, you get a free championship ring. So why not have both? It's a great deal. You use the code free ring at checkout, and you receive a $60 ring for free with the purchase of a trophy or a belt. Go to fantasychamps.com. I get mine for free when Jason's putting it up in my face when he yeah. holds that ring. I just take it off his <laughs> finger. That's how I get I mine. I should really wear all of mine for the shows. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> like John Gruden style? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Marty, you've got to come back with me. Where? Back to the future. Oh, 
Oh, it's some wind chimes. I, Look, I forgot. It's been a year since I've heard that drop. It's so good. As Jason was eloquently completing the read for Fantasy Champs, I mean, the, that was the best read of all time. We were getting to the point of this segment, and I, in my head, I went, holy crap, did I forget to do a drop? Oh, for did, this segment, what what is our transition going to be? And guess what? I I made one. You crushed it. I went to the future, <laughs> or went to the past. Yes, Bill and Ted style. Brought it back. I said I got to remember to make a drop, and then it just appeared. Well, this was a live show last year on our uh, Fantasy for the People tour, and we're bringing it back for 2020. And we're on the hunt. We want to find the 2020 version of a few players. Last year, Chris Godwin broke out. He was a wide receiver outside the first three rounds. He was a wide receiver perceived as the number two on his team behind Mike Evans. Um, a, a wide receiver that ended up with loads of targets last year and uh, has that contested catch ability. And uh, he also had a quarterback in Jameis Winston that was willing to go full I don't care on the passing attempts. Yes. So... Uh, Jameis was what 30, 30 for thirty. Uh, yeah, yeah, Winston. Uh, I believe that's correct. Fifty one hundred passing yards. So when we look towards twenty twenty, who is this year's Chris Godwin for you? Uh, for me, I I think there's uh, a pretty obvious archetype out there. It's another wide receiver who was drafted high, who looked so many flashes of brilliance in his first couple of years, but had not truly broken out. And now it's coming into year three with all the stars aligned. That is, you know, the the Chris Godwin archetype for me is Calvin Ridley this season. Calvin Ridley, uh, if you look back at last year, his second year, the first part of that season, he wasn't, uh, his snap counts were in the 50s, 60%. There was a change that happened over the course of that season where he got more involved and all of a sudden you you actually saw Ridley have a lot of fantasy success. He, towards the end of the year, he's 80%, 89%, 80, 85, 94%. He became the guy that got rid of Muhammad Sanu. That opened things up for him. During that stretch, I don't know if you realize this, from weeks five through the rest of his season, because he, he didn't play after week 15 with an abdominal in, injury, he was the wide receiver eleven. He was already a wide receiver one, and and you also have the other side of the field, right, which is Chris Godwin had Mike Evans, and right. it just seemed impossible. It was, that, it, it was an impossibility. It was an impossibility that coming into this year, you could say Chris Godwin will be the guy drafted over Mike Evans, and um, you know, it, next year, if we come in and say that Calvin Ridley is being drafted ahead of Julio Jones... Uh, that that it sounds blasphemous. It, it sounds wrong, but I think that could be the case. You have a guy in Calvin Ridley who has already shown great flashes, especially around the end zone. I mean, he had 10 touchdowns his rookie year, seven touchdowns in only 13 games last season. So you have the between the ton 20s numbers that he's he's great at. And then if he actually splashes in the end zone, making up for Julio, sure. that's where you have true fantasy success. Yeah, I think Calvin Ridley is the most clear example of a player that could do that. I mean, the the parallels are yes. similar and the hype is similar. I mean, it wasn't like we weren't coming into last year with Chris Godwin hype. And we're coming into this season with with tremendous Calvin Ridley hype. And so, but I think he can pay off on that hype. And it's still hard for people to take him in the place that he belongs, just like last year no one would take Godwin in the place that he belongs in fantasy drafts. And uh, if you took him, it paid off. So I think Ridley has a great chance of doing that. No doubt. Um, I'm going to go with Will Fuller here. Okay. I think Will Fuller is a mm. – uh, I think we've talked about it, Mike. You brought it up as one of the most nebulous situations because everybody on Houston feels like a maybe, yet you know De yes. Deshaun Watson's going to be great. And you know that somebody has to fill the, the gaping target uh, void? vacuum void of DeAndre Hopkins. And I think it will be Will Fuller. The struggle for Will Fuller has always been the injury concern, and it remains to be until he proves otherwise. If you listen to him talk coming into the season, you listen to the way Deshaun Watson's talking about him, which, again, that's just speculative. But he came in heavier, stronger, new trainer, and he's done a lot to change the way he at least is trying to work on the injury problem. He talked about uh, his mechanics and how the, he's rebuilt them. 
how he's got a different posture in the way he runs because these are things that could have been leading to the lower leg type of injuries. He's also on a fifth-year option this year, and so he's playing for that Cheddar. And he's been a player that has gone out there, and he is such a difference maker for Houston. When he's been on the field over the last uh, four seasons, they score almost six points a game more than when he's off. He's when we've seen that too. Like they are just a better team with Will Fuller on the field. So many targets um, available in Houston, but he's got the twenty missed games out of like forty-eight career games that he could have played, and that's been the big problem. But he's not being drafted. I mean, he's a seventh-round pick because people don't know who to decide between. In my opinion, he's the best with the most uh, rapport built in, sure. obviously, with Deshaun Watson. He's who I'm banking on. I've put uh, this in play in my dynasty league. I went out and actively pursued Will Fuller looking for the breakout. So, um, you know, we've, we've, had, we've had Rule 86 before. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the same with Will Fuller in Rule 15 or whatever number he wears <laughs> because he when he's on the field – he has uh, Deshaun Watson's eye. So I, I can attest that Andy has certainly be, become a Will Fuller believer. He has been making those trade offers and trying to get him. He he believes in him. I I do want to argue for the other side, though, because I, I feel like when you look at Will Fuller, you, here's a guy that has not been able to do it for a season. He's not been able to have great fantasy success outside of monstrous games, whereas Brandon Cooks has just been a superstar every year of his career until this past year when injury derailed him and he was the wide receiver 62. But before that, and this is for all sorts of different teams and quarterbacks, he was the wide receiver 14, 9, 12, 13, dealt with a bunch of concussion issues, and he was not on the field that much last year and was a huge disappointment. But like, if I have to bank on one of these guys – because someone, I, I think we all we are all yep. in agreement. Someone's going to score a lot of fantasy points for Deshaun Watson. He's not going to, you know, just get blown out in games and not come back. And I feel like both of these guys carry injury risk, but one of them has a much better proven track record. Sure. Although he he is new to the team, whereas Fuller has the report. That would be the the argument to me on the Fuller side. That's where I give the edge. To Will Fuller. So I'm going to bring my uh, this year's Chris Godwin. I want to read you guys a couple numbers real quick. I want you to tell me who the number one wide receiver is from these numbers. Okay. Player A averaged eight targets, 4.7 receptions, and 79 yards a game. Okay. Player B averaged 7.4 targets a game, 4.9 receptions, and 74 yards a game. Who's the number one wide receiver out of those two guys? Uh, I know this. I know the trap that's being set. I know. I, I see the palm fronds laid over the hole. I uh, I see you holding some Hostess apple pies uh, on the other side of the trap, and Jason's you have, trying to. You're avoiding the punji pit very well. Yes, and uh, that's Michael Gallup and Amari Cooper. And I'm not saying that you. The reason I bring those numbers up is because. Those numbers don't dictate that one of those guys is a number one wide receiver for the team. You look and go, that's that's the same picture. Those are the, the, those guys are putting up very equal production. The difference is one of those guys is making a hundred million dollars as and is an early draft pick, and Michael Gallup is a he's being drafted in the seventh, the eighth round. Michael Gallup was actually in strong consideration for my guys this year. I. I don't want to leave a draft without him. Now it 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 brings me like he couldn't be a my guy because I'm all in on on uh, the Blake out Blake Jarwin and I'm not going dub Cowboys and my guys. I'm not. I don't want that type of pain inside of my body. But Michael Gallup at wide receiver 32 is, is absolutely ridiculous. He he would have been getting the 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 uh, the Calvin Ridley bump that. He probably he broke out last year over 1,100 yards in 14 games, and he would have been that guy, that wide receiver too, who's going to make the next step. But they drafted C.D. Lamb, and I get that. I get it. C.D. Lamb is an excellent wide receiver. He's an excellent rookie prospect, but he's a rookie prospect. Meanwhile, Michael Gallup is going into his third year and is a proven NFL wide receiver. I'm not allowing a uh, a first round wide receiver 
to take all of the shine, all of the sparkle off of what Michael Gallup has been able to do. Uh, I, I would say that he's a perfect candidate for this fantasy time machine segment as a you know perceived wide receiver too. I would also say that while those that comparison and the trap you craftfully laid, that's not a word, mm -hmm. uh, was nice, Michael Gallup had a very incredible week 17 where he was the number one overall fantasy wide receiver. He also scored half of his entire season's worth of touchdowns in the final game of the year, which, you know, we talk about how that affects your perception on the whole year. He was not as consistent as Amari sure. Cooper. And he did not have any stretches anywhere close to what Amari Cooper had put up. But he was a great wide receiver. I mean, I coming out of college, I was a big Michael Gallup fan. I think he's a great player. I think his seventh-round draft cost is indicative of the perception that the $100 million man is the only wide receiver that matters in Dallas, which is not the case at all. So I like him as a candidate to be able to step forward, being drafted as the wide receiver 32 a year after he had a an incredible, you know, what number 22 overall last year. That's a C.D. Lamb downgrade that's not fair. Yes, I agree. All right, looking at uh, – well, hop back into the time machine. Am I? I am no. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> we've always enjoyed oh, the – Scott. Uh, we're going to find 2020's Mark Andrews, which is, I think, the most fun thing to do every offseason. Try to find that breakout tight end. Last year, you had Mark Andrews. You had Darren Waller. The year before George Kittle, uh, you know, just broke out. And really, it's somebody that has to be drafted late. It has to be somebody after the eighth round, like Mark Andrews was. Not a rookie tight end, because they generally just don't produce. They're not going to have that breakout season. Uh, maybe it's a tight end in an under-the-radar offense. Not everybody saw Baltimore doing what they did last year. Oh, nobody saw that. Nobody saw yeah. Baltimore doing that, because it was unprecedented. Yeah, that was ridiculous uh maybe a tight end that flashes some yards after the catch capabilities mm -hmm. that's always nice to see um and somebody that's going to soak up a large percentage of the market share for an offense the way kelsey and uh waller and andrews and and kittle do so what are some candidates for a 2020 version of mark andrews uh, I, I think there are so, so many late round guys that we haven't even brought up. Ian Thomas, uh, could fit this bill. Um, the postman, and, oh, Dan Arnold. That's what you get <laughs> when you mess with the postman. There are so many great options, but if I have to look at who I think will break out and, and, you know, he's, he's been in the league a couple of years, hasn't got it done now has an opportunity to really have a ton of usage. I'm going back to the Falcons. It's it's Hayden Hurst. Um, Hayden Hurst was a first round draft pick in the NFL ahead of Mark Andrews. He was drafted that way because he's a talented fellow. But Mark Andrews is better. I mean, Mark Andrews dominated and won that job, and they shipped Hayden Hurst off. But Hayden Hurst is desperately needed without Austin Hooper and and Matt Ryan has always utilized his tight end. I mean, we forget how dominant Austin Hooper was as a tight end through the beginning of the year before he got injured. He was the tight end one by a wide margin. This is while Julio is going off. This is while, you know, I, I talked about from week five on that Calvin Ridley was the wide receiver 11. In fact, once they got Calvin Ridley more involved, you saw the three of them and Matt Ryan really start to catch fire weeks five and six when Matt Ryan put back-to-back -back weeks of being the quarterback two and then he got injured that mm. the the following week it kind of derailed that then Austin Hooper got injured you know we we've talked a little bit about Matt Ryan in his uh rubber band you know first year second year with a coordinator I I think the Falcons offense could really really explode this year and the opportunity for Hayden Hurst to come in and fill that Austin Hooper role the amount of vacated targets uh, and utilization, and if you look at the depth chart, there's nobody here that's going to eat into Hayden Hurst's role. So sure. he's you know he's near the eighth round, and I think if I'm looking at a late round guy and I have to take a probability check, I don't see how Hayden Hurst doesn't score a lot of fantasy points. I, they just don't have. I'm not Russell Gage is not going to come in here and take all the targets away from the tight end position. I'm not worried about that. And coming into the NFL, I did like him as a prospect. So 
It takes a couple years for a tight end to break out. There's a lot of markers that say he's going to get a lot of work, and I don't think that Hooper was anything special. I think he was a perfect fit for the role, and Hurst is a very similar prospect to Austin Hooper. Yeah, Hurst at least has the athletic profile to be able to do that. I mean, Matt Ryan muddled through. I think Austin Hooper deserves some credit and yeah, some he, respect he got because it done. Levine Toilolo and those that came after Tony Gonzalez couldn't become what Hooper was, but Hurst has the profile to do it. He's also in the offense. When we talk about that offense that you know could uh, at least be in the upper echelon, that's the one major concern with my potential 2020 Mark Andrews. Um, wanted to make him a my guy. Too scary. Chris Herndon... <laughs> Chris Herndon tight end. Why is it scary to make the starting tight end for the Jets a my guy, Andy? Because of his head coach. I've got a little drop I'm going to try out for oh, oh, for, for, his, for his head coach. Okay. You ready? Number two. Oh, <laughs> yes! Oh, baby! I can hear Al Borland from across the studio. You, you a That's... big fan, Al? Do you approve, you approve that message? I had no idea where you were going, but I love it. Number two. Oh, man. So there is a bit of a number two problem. <laughs> and I, you know, but we're talking under uh, the radar offensive capabilities. Do you believe in Sam Darnold? Right. The necessary argument Jason just made for Hayden Hurst. Chris Herndon is the uh, quintessential post type sleeper tight end candidate. Over 500 receiving yards in his rookie season. Had a stretch of games where he's very fantasy relevant in his rookie season. Very hard to do for a tight end. Last year, you throw it out, it's gone. Drawing rave reviews at camp, also very, very necessary. Jamison Crowder cannot carry this offense. Brashad Perryman, he's not going to carry this offense. And Sam Darnold has um, you know, a rapport with Chris Herndon. I think he has great upside ability. So I'm going to go with Chris Herndon to break out. All right, and you you all know I, I like Blake Jarwin as a, a breakout tight end. I also like this guy. I as had no idea, but go on. <laughs> I like this guy as a as a breakout tight end, and he's more of a Mark Andrews type of a player to me, where Andrews got it done, low volume, efficiency, just being Mark Mandrews. Like yes. out there just dominating with huge uh with huge touchdown plays. I wanna bring up <laughs> Thank you. I wanna bring up Johnu Smith, starting tight end from the Tennessee Titans. And here's the the first number I want to go to is avoided tackles. So last year, Travis Kelsey was number two in avoided tackles. He avoided 15 tackles on 97 receptions. Jonu Smith, number three, he avoided 14 tackles on 35 receptions. The dude is elusive. The dude is super strong. He was second in average yards after catch. Like He is a Mark Andrews type of player. And the Tennessee Titans are a... Baltimore Ravens type of an offense. It, it runs through. Uh, it, it, they want to slow it down, win with defense, and Smith won't have high volume, but he he will when he touches the ball, big things are going to happen. So if he can really remove himself from the shadow of Delaney Walker, who was just a stalwart for the Tennessee Titans offense for years, which and, and Delaney Walker is now gone. It's Smith's job. I think that I think that Jonu can come through as a, a as a potential breakout guy, low volume but big plays. Yeah, and that was what it, we saw last year. The games that he was fantasy relevant were games he scored in. Uh, he had three touchdowns last year. All three of those weeks, he was a top twelve tight end. Um, you know, he's been in the league a little bit of uh, time, sure, but he's moved forward in fantasy finish each and every year as well. Definitely fits the big play role. Um, one more fantasy time machine for you. We also have some best ball we're going to get into. 2020's Devontae Parker. Oh, my. <laughs> um, late uh, round dart throw good luck. type of pick. Um, younger, but been in the league for a little while. Surprised everyone in the fantasy space to the point where, you know, there wasn't anybody who once Devontae Parker had a good game started him the next week and then he had a good game and then he got started the next week it was wait is this real like right the mirage for three or four weeks before you had to finally believe it so uh what do you guys think who's who's the 2020 dart throw and i'm gonna throw that out, dart throw at the wide receiver position sure. uh, coming out of nowhere 
For me, the the name that seemed obvious was Brashad Perryman. Uh, you know, he's I like it. He was he was drafted to be great, just like Devontae Parker yeah, first was. First round pick. He was not great, just like Devontae Parker was. Um, and then as the years went on, he was known to be not great. Just yeah, this guy is washed. He's never going to become anything. And then all of a sudden. There's a flash of brilliance, and it took a couple injuries to superstars Mike Evans and Chris Godwin last year, but when he was given that opportunity, Brashad Perriman just caught fire the last month, and you, I mean, I don't believe it. I still don't believe it. Like, I, don't hear what I'm not saying. I think it was a mirage. I heard you believed it. I I heard it was, uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I think it was a mirage. Um, what we saw, and here's what we saw uh, the last month of the season last year, he was the wide receiver two for fantasy. And it wasn't, you know, sometimes you, you have that and in a month stretch. It's because someone had some singular dominating, unfathomably but, good game. Oh. But, but Jason, yes. Voice of public opinion. Number two. Yes. There is a brown <laughs> spot on, oh, no! on this take. Oh no. Um, there is certainly a stain here and <laughs> oh. it, and yeah, Adam Gase is an issue. Um, but the reality is, I don't think anybody looked last year at the Dolphins' offense, and, and yeah, there was a problem. There, there was a brown spot there. <laughs> yeah, there that was, was persisting from year to year. Right. It was. It was one of those things where the the offense looked bad, the quarterback situation looked bad, but it became about well, there's nowhere else to go with the ball. Preston Williams went down. Gasicki was there. It was basically those. Those three players. Well, if you look at the Jets, it's very similar. I mean, you brought up Chris Herndon. Okay, maybe maybe he's the guy. Maybe he's Gasicki like. Uh, you've got Jamison Crowder, who's you know short yardage, close to the line. Maybe that's the Great Preston receiver, William, but so different than Brashad. And Brashad Perryman, the downfield option. If if Sam Darnold just starts, you know, chucking it deep, it's going to be to Perryman, and maybe he breaks out. And when that does. Like if that happens for a couple of weeks, I will believe it earlier than I did last year with Devontae Parker. Do you think, out of curiosity, do you think Jets fans are happy that we've picked two Jets in this fantasy time machine section, or unhappy because I've hit that drop three times? Well, I think they are neither. Number two, four times. Yes, they're, they're they're realistic people. They probably Jets fans. Here's right? what here's what they're saying when we're picking these. Here's what their answer is. Nope. <laughs> Wait, Rashad Perryman, not happening. Chris oh. Herndon, he's a jet. Uh, we know what it's like to be pessimistic about our home team, but the reality is a lot of times these bad situations, especially these nebulous ones where you don't yep. know where the value is going to come, those are where the breakouts come from precisely because it's a murky situation. I, When we got into the show, Doc, today and we were putting in our – projections here i went to put brashad perryman in and jason had won the prize of brashad perryman i think that's the best answer it, it just fits the bill so much the the player that has, you given up on like Devonte parker became a laughing stock broke out i think that's the right answer but i have a i have a suggestion what if it was i, I want to hear it what if it was dante pettis oh yeah look you forget Dante Pettis' draft pedigree. I mean, yeah. second round pick. Second round pick. Had had some breakout games toward the end of his rookie season. Lost the favor of his of his coach, but they are dealing with some injuries over there in I San can't Francisco. talk about him too much cuz I open myself up to potential litigation, but <laughs> it, it, what if it was? I mean, the camp reports on Dante Pettis are like, positive right now. It would be great. It, it would be it's awesome. not, it's we, not going to be though. It, Probably not. Yeah, well, we're, we're talking in the world of low probability right now. This is a time machine. Just remember, nobody believed in Devontae Parker at the beginning of last year. Yeah, if we yeah. had brought that name up, it would have been laughed at, and yeah. that's why we bring up Rashad Perriman and Dante Pettis. Mike, who do you think? Oh, I'm, my. I'm bringing up a player who has also been in the league for quite some time. I was trying to go, you know, like, little, really more literal with the comparison of the players where Parker had been in forever and had really not done much. This player, has uh, he's got a little bit more on his resume than Devontae Parker uh, had coming into this year, but no one's expecting anything. From the Lizard King, Sammy Watkins. Oh, bloody. Look, I get it. <laughs> I ran the spell check on this show, Doc, and it said, did you mean McCole Hardman? <laughs> I get it. 
But he just, it's hard to quit the lizard, man. He he, he just- Cut when, that up. When you, Ship it. When you have completely given up on Sammy Watkins, as we finally did, it looked like the Kansas City Chiefs had finally given up on Sammy Watkins after the week one explosion. He goes into the playoffs, and he's like the most productive player on the team through that stretch of games. Sammy Watkins was a huge reason why Kansas City was able to win the Super Bowl. Uh, he helped with the comebacks uh, early on, and it's it's wild. It's a wild place we live in where I'm trying to endorse Sammy Watkins again. Well, Sammy Watkins has always had the 37 bullet points of why he should be great. Yes. There's never been a time now. I mean, he's got the best quarterback in football. He's the number two on the best offense in football. He has always had the reasons why it should happen, and he has always – deceived us yes well it's it's i mean the the blood type he can he can change the, or he can't change the temperature of his body <laughs> so he has to just go with the flow <laughs> and uh, the, the reasons are there like you said the bullet point is there he's uh best offensive football he was willing to take less money to come back to the team once again wow this whole segment is about a time machine i will i'm gonna be honest with the listeners at home, you've wherever been, you. you've been to the future. No, I don't actually have a time oh. machine. If I did, I would not be using it for these purposes. Here's I'd the, be living large. Here's, my friend. Here, here's the reality. Last year, you know, we talked about the the 2019 version of George Kittle, Robert Woods, Nick Chubb. The only issue with this trying to pick the next Devonte Parker is that those don't happen every year. Mm -hmm. The Devontae Parker, I, I went back to 2018, 27, trying to find these guys who have been in the league a long time and then finally broke out and they were, uns you know, uh, they were they were totally surprising. And, you know, there's always a, a late tight end that breaks out or, you know, a, a, an undervalued wide receiver. I, I do believe that our answers here are really in line with what could happen. I mean, Prashad Perriman, Sammy Watkins, even Dante Pettis, they do fit the bill of what Devontae Parker is and did and what could happen. But I would say the probabilities that there is oh, a Devontae Parker low. this season yes. is probably very low. Well said. Also, how many consecutive weeks does Sammy Watkins have to give fantasy football managers before – you start him. Before the endorsement? The boy who cried wolf situation. Uh, I want to make a joke and say eight, but honestly. Two? two if, if you got two strong games to yeah. open, you would be playing Sammy Watkins. I would be advising you to play Sammy Watkins. That's the He's heating up. That's the Chiefs effect, too. If yes. you have a chance to get a part of that offense. And, and uh, just to uh, you know help out, producer Judge Giamatti Brooks wants people to know his pick would be New York Giants, Sterling Shepard. He's always had a soft spot in his heart for the Shepard. Yeah, four four years? Is this his fifth year now? That's yeah, actually a, same as Parker. That's yeah. actually a really good pick. The only reason I don't think it applies is because coming into last year, Devontae Parker sucked. And I think most people look at Sterling Shepard and say, he's a really good wide receiver. It just he's hasn't been, happened yet. Yeah, he's been solid. Yeah. He is an 11th round pick, at least. So. Oh, certainly. Uh, Draft-wise, value-wise, I, I, I do like throwing that name out there. Highest. Yeah, I, I think he, people look at him as like maybe we've seen the best of Sterling Shepard. So that would be a situation where maybe with a fully healthy year, we haven't. I like it. I like it. Thanks for the addition. Not a lot. <laughs> All right, let's do some best ball. Best Ball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. I know we had the time machine drop, but that drop's really good, too. Look, I, uh, I, I do great work, guys. You're I welcome. am really enjoying I've, I've been getting screenshots of people's underdog draft yeah. and implementing some of the strategy strategies we've been sharing, and I absolutely love it. People are crushing these drafts. Look, if you want to play best ball, Underdog Fantasy is the place to do it. If you don't know what best ball is, you draft, and then the computer sets your optimal lineup. You don't go in and make weekly or even or daily transactions. It's draft, and you're done. Who's is, the best drafter? It is a ton of fun, and on Underdog Fantasy, look, they've got the best ball mania for a chance at a uh, million dollars in prizes. Underdogfantasy.com. Go sign up, or you can download it on the App Store. The, the tip I want to give today, it's short and sweet. Uh I feel like I've been talking about these 
my strategy of going after these tight ends a little bit more, but drafting an elite tight end in best ball in the second round pick, I know there's a there's an opportunity cost of going in on Travis Kelsey or George Kittle, and I'm, I'm for this tip, I'm even going to include the other two guys, Mark Andrews and Zach Ertz. The thing about uh, using an early pick on one of these guys, one, I mean, you know, you know what they're going to do. They're going to give you a positional advantage at the tight end position. But it opens up things for an opportunity cost later on in your draft. If I draft Travis Kelsey, I'm drafting one backup tight end. You you got to fill up this roster with a whole bunch of players. I'm taking my Blake Jarwin. I'm taking Chris Herndon. Later you're on saying in- you're you're basically by investing in a an elite advantage at tight end, you're buying a roster spot. Yes, I am buying a draft pick later on that I can take a a, a chance on another running back sleeper, another wide receiver sleeper. Jerry Judy. Instead of, yeah, Jerry Judy. Perfect. Instead of having to spend three of my draft picks on tight ends who I'm hoping one of them comes through, I think that it is pretty wise to invest early a a draft pick on Travis Kelsey or one of those top four Uh, guys. I I love grabbing one of those four guys. The one thing I will say that is uh, in addition – is that it? Let's say you, someone falls in, you know, in value, and you you do see a third tight end you want. One of the nice things that, that's different than a redraft league, uh, because you're never going to take this tight end that you know has maybe a low probability of scoring. So you're you, you're never going to take them and plug them in your flex. But if these guys hit, they also can go into your flex spot. Sure. So you're you know you're drafting a tight end and or a flex when you invest early, whereas in a redraft league, you're not really doing that even though your flex spot allows you to play a tiny. You're not going to do it because you would never know when. You don't have to know when in best ball. I I love grabbing a stud tight end. All right, and like Mike said, go sign up, underdogfantasy.com. You can search for Underdog Fantasy in the App Store. Be a part of the $1 million in prizes. You hear that? $1 million in prizes. Best Ball Mania over at underdogfantasy.com. A reminder... We will be live answering fantasy football questions this afternoon. So this will be Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern, giving away a UDK for life. If you don't want to miss it, make sure you go to youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers, subscribe, and click the notification bell. You do not want to miss it. It's going to be a party. It's going to be fun. Breakouts, busts, sleepers, values next oh, week. Oh, let's get into it. See you next week. Or I'll see you in a couple hours. Either way, goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.